So we have to end just before 1 o'clock. So I'm sorry we're going to have to cut this out a little bit short. I'm sorry. Uh, today, we're going to do a couple of things. Um, we're going to go over the training and engagement survey that was sent out over the last couple of weeks. We'll go over some of the details on that and some of the comments. Um, Marla Young, who's the clerk, is going to come and give us just a brief update of what the clerk's office does. One of the things that we found in the survey and in talking to employees is not all of us know what other offices and what other parts of the county do. So she's going to just take a couple of minutes to talk about the clerk's office. Next month we'll pick somebody else so that we can kind of have a better understanding of what, all, what we all do. And then we have Flint Belk from Workers' Compensation who is here to uh, talk about defensive variety. Before we get there, um, we just finished a wellness um, program, wellness little contest. Um, it had to do with eating healthy and exercise and different things. Um, and Rebecca has gift cards for folks for participating. So Janica Bass, Sherry Isaacson, Maria Busby, Stephanie Quintero, uh, Joanna Yardley, Sharon Zundel, Brad Rhodes, Danielle Clarkson all got gold medals during the Olympics. Um, silver medals were Diana Peterson, Elizabeth Ryan, and Tammy Berry. And bronze medals were Rebecca and Mary Huffman. So we have certificates up here, and Rebecca has those gift cards. So. Marla, we're going to do things that the clerk's office does. We are the minister of elections, which keeps us pretty much year round. Um, we also are uh, passport agents, so we process passport applications and help with that. Um, we issue marriage licenses and perform marriages quite frequently. We get to actually do the, the weddings. We keep the agendas and minutes and all contracts, ordinances, um, anything that the commissioners pass, we keep all of those records in our office. Any questions on what we do? <laughs> of course, the earlier class says Diane tries to convince them not to get married. <laughs> and that is true sometimes. Thank you. So, any questions anybody has for our What was your highlight of the year? Of, the, of this year? Yeah. Or that I didn't have an opponent. <laughs> How's that? For honesty. Okay. Um, we just talked about the wellness from last month. This next month, some of you have have received an email. We're offering an incentive for all of the county employees who would like to participate with the Sheriff's Department in their PT test. There are four different dates. Um, you don't have to pass their standards, but you're welcome to come participate. Dale might have to help me with some of these, but it's a mile and a half run, um, a 300 yard sprint, 300 meter sprint, push up, sit ups, and a jump, or a high jump, vertical jump. So, it's $10 if you come participate. It's $15 if you meet any one of the standards that is the post exit standard. Do we get that? Are we going to do? The sheriff's if so, the sheriff's office you provide $10 to participate. If you pass one of the standards, we'll give you 15 bucks as well. How about 15 for each one? Pass them all. That's up to the sheriff. I don't get to make that. Uh, so training and engagement survey. This, this went out. Um, we're going to just go through a few of the questions. If you have additional questions on what happened or what the answers were on this, come and ask me. We've got them all that you can look at. So my organization is dedicated to my professional development, and I'm satisfied with professional growth opportunities and job-related training. We had about 87% say that they agree or strongly agree with that, that the county is dedicated to professional growth opportunities and professional development. Some of the comments, though, there's no way to move up in this organization. I do love the training and development, but there are no growth opportunities. There needs to be more room for cross-training and increased resentment between coworkers and sharing more of the tasks. Those are things that we're going to look to work on. Anybody have suggestions on how we can do that? It's a challenge with a small county. We don't have a lot of turnover. There are a lot of places to move up. But if you have ideas on that, please come and talk to me about it. 
Next one, Box Elder County does an excellent job of keeping employees informed about matters affecting us. So we're trying to let you know. Um, only 6% strongly agree. We do an excellent job of it. 62, almost 63% say they agree, but 27% say they disagree that the county does a good job of communicating with employees. What's interesting is this next one down here. What, what could the county do to improve communication with employees? We had 82 people participate in the survey. All 82 people had an opinion about what we could do to improve communication. To me that says you want to have some communication back and forth, you want it to improve, we just need to find other ways to do it. Some of the comments. Get more input from employees on issues and let employees come up with solutions. It doesn't always have to come from the top down, employees can have good, good ideas that we need to implement. County has the opinion of we will do what we want and the employees will deal with it. We are never informed as to why certain decisions are made. It seems that some individuals issue information to those who they want to know rather than letting everyone know. Next one, there seems to be a cone of silence with the commission. We're left in the dark worrying that they are out to get us. One of the things that starting this month that I've talked to some of you about it, um, the commission is going to do is everybody has a birthday in that month, they're going to invite to come to lunch. It's going to be the last Monday of the month. Um, you're welcome to come, give ideas, criticism, suggestions. Really, it's the commissioner's chance to thank you for what you do for the county. We're going to start next Monday, a week from yesterday. So everybody with a March birthday, we just started to pass out invitations. We do that every month moving forward. We didn't have that budgeted. So when I brought the idea up to the commissioners, they said they all get some money for travel and training, different things. They said, we'll pay for it out of our budget. That's important enough to us to give the employees um, an opportunity to give us some feedback. They're going to pay for that. One of the things that came up on the bottom, it says monthly newsletter. We had about 20 different comments that somewhere along the line said monthly newsletter. If we produced a monthly newsletter, how many people would read it? Two or three hands. Here's the big question, though. How many people would be willing to help put something into the newsletter at various times? That, that's the challenge. All of us have a lot to do, and so it's figuring out how we can spread some of that out so it's not just on Rebecca, it's not just on me, it's not, we don't force Miss Mitch to do it, but we can spread it out a little bit and let everybody have um, some input on what goes out in that employee newsletter. I am encouraged to come up with new and better ways of doing things. About 85% said that they agree, but 17% said that they disagree. They're not encouraged to come up with new things, just do things the way that you've done. The next one we flipped intentionally to see if you were actually reading the survey or if you were just clicking boxes. <laughs> My work regularly gives me a feeling of personal accomplishment. This one was more spread than any of the other responses in the survey. Most of them were really high on one end and not on the other. So strongly disagree was almost 8% and disagree was 20%. So we have almost 30% of the employees in the county that say that their work doesn't give them a feeling of personal accomplishment. We want to try to fix that. First way to support <laughs> You all may agree with this too, but the first one is stop doing around. Some other ones that work out <coughs> increased vacation carryover and accrual rates. Um, that creates some liability issues financially, but we're looking at it. Um, the next next comment, five ways to help benefit the employees who don't abuse their leave instead of losing the leave at the end of the year. It seems that employees that don't abuse their leave are punished by losing that leave. As we go through policies, we're looking at it. The benefits committee who met 10 days ago started talking about some ways that we can address that as well. Provide more direction on how I can benefit the county. We're all doing things, but how is what I'm doing on a daily basis impacting the county's goals? Being fair to all, having the same expectation of productivity from each employee despite department. And my favorite comment in the survey, even though I don't like Diet Pepsi, Diet Pepsi from a fountain on my desk every morning. If I know who it is, we can take care of that for a couple of weeks. 
<laughs> My work regularly gives me a feeling of personal accomplishment. This is another one that was split quite a bit, similar to the last one. This is an interesting comment. I'm going to let you read it for a second. <clears throat> Okay, you can't say it in your back. It says, this place could be a dream job for me if the politics and ridiculous behavior of some people were eliminated. People seem to forget that we are all on the same page in life. We are just trying to earn a decent living while providing a good quality of work that reflects well on us. Sure, there are a few people who are milking the system, and that should be addressed through training and education. But for the most part, the higher ups need to recognize we aren't their enemies, and we are more than a liability on an Excel spreadsheet. Can anybody relate to that comment? <coughs> it's one of the challenges that we have, that as employees, a lot of us want to feel like we have a say in what's going on, that we're listened to. That's part of why we're going to start doing these lunches with commissioners. It's why we're trying to do some of these RAP programs and put you in front of the decision maker so you have more of a say in what happens with benefits, with what happens with pay increases with what happens with the tools that you need. I see it as my job to provide you guys with the best tools possible so that you can do a good job. So if there are things that you need to do your job better, come talk to me. Come talk to Jenica. Come talk to Rebecca. Come talk to any of the commissioners. That's, that's the goal, is so that you guys can do your jobs well. Um, we're going to keep doing some surveys. Hopefully we can stop the answers about stop doing rap. But you know, if that doesn't happen, that's fine. Too. Any does anybody have any questions, comments about the survey? No? Okay. Excellent. Okay. We'll turn it over to you. Okay. We'll get started on uh, talking about driving safety. So first question is, how many bad drivers do I have out there? Please raise your hand. One. How many Utah drivers? Great drivers. Great drivers. Great drivers. Raise your hands. I like to think I'm a great driver. Okay. So, what are the rest of you? Just good? Yeah, good. That's okay. So, the last year, how many employees, how many workers, including Sheriff's departments, manufacturing plants, uh, school teachers, bus drivers, trucking, construction. How many people lost their lives while doing their job? How many workplace fatalities were there last year? In, in Utah United or in the county? United States. United States. Too many is a good answer. Somebody take a guess. 100. 1,000. One million. How many fatalities <laughs> in the United States? 4,382. <coughs> and that, that is too many. What do you think the biggest category as far as the, the cause of death was? Distracted driving. Okay, driving in, as, as a whole, motor vehicle accidents were one of the biggest categories there, about 30 to 40 percent. That's probably not a surprise because a lot of people do a lot of driving in their job. Probably most of you put on a, a lot of miles. I know I, I do with, with my job. So we're going to talk about some things that uh, you've all probably heard before, and then I'm going to end with a, uh, a video on distracted driving. So most of the time, for those of you who are out on patrol and you come across an accident, is most of the time the cause of that accident uh, mechanical, an unsafe car, uh, you know, the brakes go out, or it just automatically the accelerator accelerates and rear ends that other car, or is it operator error? What percent of the time is operator error? I, I would say it's probably 99. Even as a whole, when we take all industries combined, all workplace injuries, it's usually about 9 out of 10 operator error, and probably more so in driving. So if that causes all of the accidents, operator error, what are some of the things that people are doing wrong? What do you see out there? 
texting. Okay, so distracted driving, and we're going to talk at great length <coughs> with the video on distracted driving. What is your policy here at Box Elder County as far as cell phone use? I'm, I'm asking. Do you have a written policy? No. Okay, so how about texting? Prohibited. Should, should be. That, that's how ours is. <coughs> what if you have to take a call? Is there a safer way of receiving or making a phone call? Pull over. Pull over. Yeah, pull, pulled over. What if you can't pull over or you, you, you've got to get somewhere? Is there a safer way of doing it? And I'm not, don't answer. That's the best way. That, and that is. That's the textbook answer. That's, that's the best way. I, I know that sometimes, and our policy is such that we try and avoid it, but sometimes I have to answer the phone. And if I think it's my boss or my wife, which is my boss, you know, call me today, pick up a gallon of milk or something on the way home, I'll answer. But a couple things just that I do, and it doesn't make it, you know, the safest is just not to answer. But one is let that person know, hey, I'm driving right now. Make it quick. I'm, I'm driving. Also, don't try, if you're going to take a phone call, don't try and pass somebody and, uh, you know, look at your papers and eat at the same time. Just let your focus be on, on the road, first of all, and second, on that conversation. Slow down, get in the right lane, not the fast lane, and that, that's what I do. But the best is not to answer that at all. In addition to distracted driving, what's another hazard that causes operator error? Fatigue. Fatigue. Drow drowsy driving. Okay, what's the best thing to do? And, and I, uh, I used to think that the most common cause when people drowsy driving, okay, I'm drowsy, I fall asleep at the wheel, I turn off the road or into oncoming traffic and cause a bad accident. Actually, that doesn't happen all that often, but what does drowsy driving do? Why does it cause so many accidents? It's response time. It's reaction time. It slows that, that down as much. They say in the test that they've done, um, they say that it slows it down just as much as impaired driving when they have people driving on the, on the simulator there. So drowsy driving is one, and again, pull over, you know, how, how good does coffee, stimulants, you know, energy drinks work? Oh, for me, they work good for about an hour, two hours, and then after that, you crash. But there is no substitute for getting enough sleep. What else causes accidents? What is the number one violation, okay, that causes accidents? And this was taken from the National Safety Council <coughs> for Intensive Driving Training. Speeding. It, it's actually not speeding, no, but it's yeah, related. Close. Yes, following too close. Okay. What can you do to avoid following too close? <laughs> Don't follow okay, too close. Okay, sounds simple, right? So why is that? What, what do you learn in driver's education? What's the Two proper following distance? Two seconds. Two seconds for, now what if you're going 80 miles an hour out here? Okay. Then, then you want to probably even in, increase that maybe maybe three seconds. And, and have you ever sat on not, while you're driving and, you know, two seconds is quite a long time. And most people do follow too close going at a, a high rate of speed. And I, I tell people that, and they say, but then I, I go, you know, <coughs> in the middle lane, and then a car comes in and pulls right in front. Well, that's okay. Slow down again. You know? But you want to maintain that safe, safe distance there. Somebody said speeding. Okay. So out here on the, uh, the interstate, you can point west, we have, uh, what's the speed limit? 80. 80. What, what does that mean? That's the fastest. What does that mean? You know, how, some people sure. tell me, well, that means you can go 5 to 10 over, right? Yeah. You, know, you guys probably hear that all the time. Well, you're not going to get picked up if you're going 85. Well, maybe, maybe not. So what does a speed limit mean? That's the maximum you should go under ideal conditions with a good driver. My teenage girl... My 16-year-old has her learner's permit now. Should she go 80 out on this highway here? No. More like 60. Okay, 65. 80 is too fast for a beginning driver. What about in the wintertime when we have snow or ice or even rain? Is 80 a good idea when it's raining? 
or at night and foggy. It's not. It's the maximum under ideal conditions. And so, why do people? Why do people speed? Left too late. Left too late. So build in that ex that extra time. How much time do you save going, you know, here to Tree Mountain if you're going, if you're speeding, going 85 instead of 80? Maybe, maybe a minute. Is it, is it really worth it? And what's something else that we can do that people who, uh, a large portion of those fatalities had in common? Seatbelts. Okay, let me ask those of you who are out on, on patrol. How many of you have ever unbuckled a dead person from a crash? Okay, you have. And in, in this morning's session, there, there wasn't anybody. So you have. Compare that to how many have you seen ejected who weren't wearing their seatbelts? What do you suppose the ratio is? <laughs> 1 to 20. Yes, one, 1 to 20. Okay. So it happens. Even sometimes when people are, I mean, the impact is just so great, head trauma, internal injuries while they're wearing their seatbelt, but it really can go a long way um, for preventing those real serious injuries. Um, what are some of the, uh, the excuses that people use? And you guys see this all the time. Why do people not wear their seatbelt? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going a couple blocks. I'm only going a couple miles. I would have, I would have done that. I would have buckled in my kids if we were going on, on vacation. Who wore, who didn't wear their seatbelt when you're driving to work this morning? On your own time, by the way. Okay. At least we have some honest, honest people here. Not in the seatbelt. What about when you're on company That's an extra Right, right. Okay. okay. Um, who wore their seatbelt? Who wears their seatbelt all the time, even if you're at home, at work, short distance, long distance? Okay, how long did it take you to put on your seatbelt? Five, ten seconds? Yeah, maybe. Okay. But that's ten seconds, okay, twice a day, twenty seconds. Let's say you work twenty days a month, there we go, four hundred seconds. Yeah, that, that time adds up. You know, did you get in a wreck when you were coming in? This nope. month? You did so you wasted that time. Yeah. You did you didn't get in a wreck. Okay. You basically waste that time. But what what's the deal with seat belts? You know, are your chances high tonight when you go home that you are going to get in a wreck? They're actually very low. Now in a year's time, two years time, ten years time, we have, and that's the thing about motor vehicle accidents and fatalities, low probability, quite low probability, but high severity. When it does happen, when you are involved in that crash, you are going to want to have your seatbelt on. And that's why we wear seatbelts all the time when we don't need them. For the one time out of a thousand, the one time out of ten thousand, when we do need them, because they do save lives. And I don't need to tell you any more about that. Um, what else? See, what other hazards do we see out on the road that we have to watch out for? Debris. Okay, debris on the road. That, that, that's good. And, and there's uh, that's hard to see at night, especially. And that speed kind of comes into that, having good lighting, making sure your car is well maintained, you don't have bald tires on it, brakes work, and all of that. Let me ask you this, how many of you, is there anybody in here who has never, while driving, been flipped off before? Raise your hand if someone's never given you the one piece of before. Never have That's Just look nice or That I know of, yeah. And that, that you know of. What car are you driving? You've never it, been it happens. it happens, and there are, there are jerks out there. Okay, there are people who are jerks, and maybe you're not going fast enough, or they think you cut them off, or whatever. Even if you're driving the best that you can, and, and there, there are going to be jerks out there. What, why do you react to that? Con consider the source. Okay, do you retaliate? Do you show them, and I asked this question earlier, uh, you know, do you show them your concealed weapon? Hey, wave that. You better watch out. It's not concealed you know, if you show what, it. What do you do? What's the best thing you do? Just ignore them. That, that's what I do. Pretend you don't see them, ignore them. 
Yeah. Well, you can. You can do that. Hey. But is there, isn't it free speech? Yeah. I've always wondered that. <laughs> Could you, can you, uh, and this is, I don't want to get sidetracked, but can you pull someone over if they flip you off? No. You cannot. Okay. You to cough. But it, it doesn't, um, if you do have something else, though, to pull them over for. Okay. Okay. Well, there's always right. anything else. Anything else that causes accidents? You know, and I know we've heard heard those things before. But if you're not in a habit of wearing your seatbelt, you know, you're you're required to do it at work. But do it when you're with your kids. Do it. Those of you who didn't, you don't need to raise your hands again. But those of you who says I don't wear a seatbelt, you buckle your kids. I hope so. Um, you know, sometimes I hear I've done driving safety training. They say, well. You know, my uncle, his uh, brother's cousin was in a, had their seatbelt on and they went in a lake and they were trapped and they drowned and then they not had it on or the seatbelt cut them in half because there was such an impact. And, you know, those are designed to save your lives. So uh, make sure you wear your seatbelts. Drive defensively, watch out for the other guy. You may be doing everything perfect. You may very well be a great driver. But it's that other guy you have to watch out for and always drive, hey, what's going to happen? I, I tell my daughter, I say, you know, when we're going on, what are you going to do? Be prepared. What if that kid, what if they come out in the street? What if that car doesn't stop at the four-way stop? Always be prepared for what's ahead of you. Okay, I'm going to show a video on distracted driving, and that'll take us to about, with just a few minutes to summarize it.
She also worked about 30 hours a week at the local pharmacy. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, she would babysit her twin cousins while her aunt was at work. Still living at home? Well, she was. Right about now, her parents are answering the door. A police officer asking if he can come inside for a minute. After all, all sorts of people suffer from any automobile accident, whether they were in the car or not. The other one was Oscar Thompson, 58 years old, technician for Fabtech Industries. Goes from plant to plant checking the equipment, inspections, calibrations, that kind of thing. Worked a lot of double shifts, especially late shifts. You know, times when the equipment can be down for a little while. Lived alone, except for a little dog he took in a couple years ago. Beagle mixed name Wally. In a little while, Wally's going to start wondering when someone's going to feed him. Oscar and Allison were both busy, busy people. My favorite kind. You see, the busier someone is, the more often I get to ride with them. And this is a great time in history for me. You know, 50 years ago, I didn't ride with as many of them. Fewer cars, shorter trips, and nowhere near as much to think about. Sure, maybe a car had a radio. And yeah, sometimes I could talk someone into not paying attention while looking for an address. But nothing like nowadays. So many more cars, so many more interesting distractions inside the cars. My work gets easier every year. And I rode with Allison and Oscar almost every day, reminding them of all the things they needed to do. And today was no different. Here, I'll show you. Let's turn back the clock to earlier today. Okay. Right now, Allison has just finished her hours at the father's got a couple errands to run before her nighttime accounting class. Her boss kept her working a few minutes late to double check some inventory paperwork. She knew she wasn't going to have much time to make it to class, but she didn't complain. Remember I told you, she's a good kid. Hey, Allison, you know how your teacher is about latecomers? You better hurry. Come on, go around this guy. Good. Now, what are the three formulas you're supposed to have memorized for today? Do you know? Total compensation equals C. You see, it's so easy. Too much for her to think about, too little time to get it all done. Rush, rush, rush. You people make it so easy for me to get to the car with you. The thing is, you never realize how lucky you are most of the time. You have no idea how demanding driving a one-ton vehicle at a mile a minute is. Do you know that every two miles, the average driver makes about 400 observations and makes about 40 different decisions based on those observations? And for about every 40 decisions, they make a mistake. They usually don't even recognize their mistake because it usually doesn't amount to anything. But they add up. Hold on a second. Hey, Allison, don't you think you should call your folks and let them know that this class usually runs late? You wouldn't want them to worry. after study that cell phones affect you the same way that a couple shots of hard liquor do. They slow reaction time, they limit your focus. And the studies have proven that it doesn't matter whether the phone is handheld or hands-free, they're all equally dangerous. But people who would never dream about getting behind the wheel of drunk have no problem using their cell phones while they drive. Anybody who does that is working for me. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you. I'm thankful for anything that takes your eyes or your mind off the road for just two seconds. That's all I need, two seconds, sometimes even less. You make enough two-second mistakes, <coughs> and I win. 60 miles per hour is 88 feet per second. Even when you're paying attention, it takes between one and two seconds for you to recognize a problem, and another second or two to react. <coughs> Which means that most incidents eat up the entire length of a football field even if you do everything perfectly. If I can take your mind off the road for even one extra second, that 88 feet can be huge. Just because most of those mistakes don't amount to anything, doesn't matter. My job is to help you make enough mistakes so that we have what's called the inopportune moment. Inopportune means inconvenient or untimely. And that inopportune moment isn't necessarily something that you create. But if you open the door and invite me in, well then, you're the only one to blame for that. The one time that you're glancing at your cell phone when the vehicle in the other lane blows a tire. It's not your fault that the tire blew. 
but it's 100% your fault that you took your eyes off the road. Love you too, Mom. Alright, bye-bye. People always talk about luck, but when you're making dozens of mistakes all day long, you're taking luck out of the picture. Take some co-worker. She's texting her friends while driving, and she gets into an accident. Surprise, surprise. And then she says, this, this is, is terrible. terrible. The, the officer, officer said it was because, because I was texting. texting. But I text and drive all the time. I just had a moment of bad luck is all. I love that. Keep telling yourself that. Because the truth isn't that you had a bit of bad luck. The truth is, is that all of your good luck has finally run out. I've got her reciting formulas, making cell phone calls, pretty much thinking about everything except the most important job she has at the moment, the safe operation of her vehicle. You have to remember, Allison's not the only one I'm riding with today. I'm riding with almost everyone out here. But for today, the other really important driver was Oscar. Remember I said that Allison made my work so easy? Well, Oscar is a bit of a pushover herself. For one thing, working all those late night shifts, he never gets any sleep. Boy, it sure is going to be good to get some shut-eye after this shift, huh? What did you get yesterday? Three, four hours? <clears throat> He's so tired. And that by itself does great things for me. But it's all the other stuff that people do to help themselves when they feel drowsy. Because the only really smart thing, pulling over, is the last thing they're going to do. They play music real loud. Which, of course, takes their eyes and mind off the road. Maybe a cup of coffee will be the trip. Hey, Oscar! You don't look very alert. Have a cup of coffee. Whoa. Almost. And now you throw in the pagers beeping, the cell phones ringing, and it's like I'm the one driving these vehicles. And Allison and Oscar are just little machines cranking out a mistake every few seconds. And when a couple of those mistakes come together, well, this is one I'm especially fond of. I was driving home with this guy, and this guy was really angry. And a pickup goes flying past him on the right, which is, of course, bad driving. And the intelligent thing to do when on the road with a bad driver is to give him plenty of space, right? But this is what I love about anger. Anger usually pushes intelligence right out the window. So my angry friend floors it to catch up with this pickup. On the back of it is one of those little bumper stickers, How's my driving for 1 800 blah blah blah? So I suggest to him that he should report this guy. So here's this pickup doing at least 15 over the limit, and my angry friend pulling up way too close, squinting to read all those little numbers, and then he only needs one more little nudge. I put into his head that he should report this guy right, right now. So he pulls out his cell phone and starts trying to enter all those numbers. Of course, later on, I'm talking to the police. My angry friend was trying to explain that the reason the nose of his car is in the bed of the pickup is that the other guy slammed on his brakes too fast. There were no major injuries, which was a disappointment to me. But it was still a good piece of work. Anger, following too closely, staring at a bumper sticker instead of the road, using a cell phone. You people are so helpful. <clears throat> anyway, back to our story. Allison is stressed out, but finally on her way to night class. Her car is now about two miles away from Oscar's, who's headed to another plant. Two minutes, give or take. And you're not going to do well on your quiz if you're totally stressed out. Where's that CD you like so much that always calms you down? Now they're about 90 seconds apart. I've got to get these two together. The north side plant, the press inspections. What's the name of that street again? Is it Westway or Nestway? Boy, what crummy handwriting. Is that a W or an N? And now in Allison's car, she's found her music. Let's keep encouraging her to do things for herself. Hey, that cute guy in accounting class has been checking you out lately. You're gonna need some lipstick. Whatever you want is always in the bottom of the bag, isn't it? Keep looking. You'll find it. The road's right there. It's not going anywhere. There's no car in front of you. And while she's adjusting the mirror, putting on her lipstick and looking at it instead of the road, we need to give one more nudge to Oscar. Wait a second, weren't you out to the same plant two months ago? And the shift supervisor couldn't get his hands on the work order and it turned into this whole big thing? You don't want to go through all that again. Is this the same place? Do you still have the work order from two months ago? 20 seconds now. Time for the final touch. 
something in Allison's car that she didn't even cause to happen. Oh, great. You don't have time to answer your phone. Just check on ID, see who it is. Go ahead, look. Allison's eyes go to the phone. That's a second. Oscar drops his clipboard, paper to go everywhere. That's a second. The cars are about eight seconds from one another. Oscar reaches for his papers and it causes his truck to drift. Allison's eyes are on her phone and takes the turn too wide. Oscar glances up, knows this is bad. Another day, another dollar. I couldn't do it without you, you know. There are so many ways to keep me out of your car, and so many reasons to do it. You already know most of them. If you're tired, don't drive. If you need to check a map for your directions, wait until you can pull over. If you own a cell phone, either ignore it, or if that's too hard, turn it off before you get in the car. After all, studies have shown that drivers who talk on cell phones are as accident prone as the ones who drive drunk. If you're going to want a particular CD or MP3 file, find it and load it before you pull out of your driveway. Don't take your eyes off the road to talk to your passengers, and don't stare at your kids in their car seats. You buckle them in, they haven't gone anywhere. Don't eat or drink while you drive. Because like I said before, driving is a dangerous full-time job with dozens of critical decisions to be made every minute. You and your ton of automobile are often covering 88 feet per second. Every time you allow your mind to wander, you're just gambling, hoping you can beat the odds. And someday, you'll gamble and lose. If you keep letting your ride along with you, then someday the inopportune moment will come. And when it does, you will be the only one who suffers. It's really one moment that becomes a lifetime of pain and loss for a number of people. Of course, it doesn't have to be that way. Look at how the smallest adjustment can make the biggest difference. Like Allison and Oscar, just one less mistake would have saved both their lives. Imagine Allison's cell phone being turned off. Now she doesn't hear the incoming call, so her eyes stay on the road and her car stays in her lane. She sees Oscar's truck drift, so she slows down. When he overcorrects, he comes into her lane, but it happens 73 feet further away because she slowed down. <coughs> He regains control in the nick of time. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. But it didn't happen that way, did it? So you see, it would be so easy to keep me out. But you don't want to keep me out. You like me. You like your distractions. You like your cell phones, your MP3s, and your coffee. This is and shoot, you've been trying for years. You can take a second to fix your hair. You can't live without me. But I can promise you this. You can't live with me either. I'll see all of you real soon. Sooner than you think. Does anybody have any questions? Comments? Anything you want to add? Okay. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah.